Greetings, 475. Roger the Border here. I've had contact with you before in that voiceover PowerPoint or whatever way back when at the start of the semester. But uh, hey, finally getting a chance to meet with you live and in person. Well, not really live, but uh, whatever. You get the point. So sorry about the get up here. I've kind of got some legal issues where I've got to keep a, a fairly low profile, if you know what I mean. So uh, I'm coming to you live, like I said, from this uh, secure location. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. Hmm? Howard. Howard who? Oh, oh, Howard's Pizza. Yeah, right. No, uh, 106 McGill. Yeah, it's on campus, McGill Hall. Yeah, 106. Just come around to the side. There's a door there. Double pepperoni, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool dude. Asta. All right, where was I? Oh, uh, secure location. Oh, that's kind of trippy. Watch that. See when I suck in like that with my nose? All right, whatever. So gender equity, kind of the uh, the talk today. But before that, you can see on the slides, Palmer's just giving you the whole slideshow without any gaps in it so that you've got all that. The housekeeping, a lot of stuff due on uh, November 28th. So just... Be heads up on that, that uh, you've got a lot of different things that are going to be due that day. The paper, if you haven't turned it in already, there's group presentations, Charlie, that day. There's quiz number three that day. There's lab number 11 that day. So be ready to do some work on November 28th when we finally have face-to-face -face class again. So topic for today, uh, gender equity. The point being that uh, humans are really, really good about uh, discriminating against different groups. And you can see there a, a list of examples in terms of some, uh, who is subject to some of that discrimination and, and being treated unfairly. Uh, Palmer's idea, I know from talking with him, or premise is that uh, added to that list then is uh, gender equity, and that we have oftentimes failed to figure out how to treat the sexes equitably, men and women. Oftentimes women end up getting uh, treated very, very unfairly and not equitably in terms of pay and all sorts of other things. And so this uh, discussion about gender equity, I'm gonna do my best to talk about it because uh, uh, I love gender equity. All right, is it a picture or is it an issue in the real world? Absolutely. Uh, next slide just kind of shows you some different examples of where gender equity has found its way into the news recently in terms of how females are treated and examples of, of being treated unfairly. From an historical standpoint, you can see that there's been a long history of gender inequality. Uh, women oftentimes have, have been uh, unable to vote throughout history. They've been unable to own land or property. Even if their husbands who have died have, have left that property for them, they've been unable to inherit. There's oftentimes been strong cultural vows in terms of how women are viewed as, as supposedly having to stay in the home and raise the children and that sort of thing. So uh, one example being Calipatera, whose son was a boxer. Uh, she couldn't even go watch him in the Olympics because women were barred from the stadium. And so she had to dress up as a male trainer. Uh, she got herself in through this disguise. He won the gold medal match and somehow she revealed her true identity uh, through her celebration. And so from that point forward, then women, everybody had to strip naked when entering the Olympic stadium to show that they were a male. That's kind of whack, if you ask me. Uh, we had maybe some baby steps of progress. Plato came along and said that uh, women should have the opportunity to attain the rank of philosopher ruler. Uh, but that didn't get too far. So again, a, a voice in the light or in the night or a light in the darkness, however you want to look at that. But oftentimes it's been one step forward and two or three steps back. The games of Horea would fit that as well. They were... Uh, foot races for unmarried females in about the 6th century BC. The winners of these foot races received an olive branch and a hunk of meat. So here you go. Congratulations. Here's your uh, olive branch and, and goat backstrap. Delish. Uh, but again, you couldn't be married and participate. It was only in foot races. And it couldn't happen during the same year as the Olympics. So while it was progress, there were still enough stipulations where it wasn't necessarily uh, a move towards true equality. 
And then uh, in the Americas, at least, America, women didn't get the right to vote until the 19th Amendment in 1920. So that's less than 100 years of women had the opportunity to participate in our democracy, even though we've been a country for much, much longer than that. Uh, Gertrude Ederle, you know, Paul Marie loves sport, and so she's a, a very cool example of how uh, women can do amazing things. In this case, Gertrude Ederle uh, became the first woman to swim the English Channel, and not only was she the first woman, she posted the fastest time ever uh, swimming the English Channel, faster than any man had ever done it. So she served as a wonderful example of human performance and, and what people can do. Uh, she damaged her hearing during this swim, and so she spent much of the rest of her adult life uh, working with other uh, deaf kids, teaching them how to swim. An amazing woman, died in 2003 and at the age of 98. So uh, kind of a cool story if you're ever interested in following up on something like that. We had the All-American Girls Baseball League during World War II. Again, progress for women, but they also had to be wearing lipstick and wear short skirts and they had to have long hair and all sorts of other stipulations. So although it was some progress, it, uh, it wasn't necessarily true equality because there were so many caveats to it. Uh, we look at some numbers in 1971, uh, 300,000 girls participated in high school sports, 4 million boys, so that's a ratio of 40 to 3. All you ladies in the class, how many of you took part in high school athletics? Well, that probably wouldn't have been possible for you 40, just 40 years ago. So pretty amazing improvement uh, in terms of uh, the numbers today because you can see pre-1972 to the mid-2000s, these massive differences in percentages of the rate at which women earn degrees and are allowed the chance to participate in certain things. And the primary driver of that was Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972. It's been called the 37 most powerful words ever created by humans. Those words being, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activities receiving federal financial assistance. So again, it's... Uh, it's, education, it's educational programs uh, that receive federal financial assistance. Oftentimes people know about Title IX through a sporting example for some reason, but it's not necessarily a sport issue. It's an education issue, uh, an educational issue in terms of those organizations or entities that receive federal monies. And so Title IX has been criticized by many because what has ultimately happened is there has been uh, a large cancellation of men's minor sports, wrestling programs, swimming programs, that sort of thing, in order to try and attain uh, proportionality between the respective sexes in terms of uh, participation and enrollment at whatever institution they may be at. And so Oftentimes people will have heard of Title IX uh, and have a negative view of it, but might not necessarily fully understand everything that's involved with it. Uh, one of the challenges with Title IX is the, you need to be in compliance with it, but there's no funding provided in order to maintain that compliance. So that's part of the reason then that oftentimes uh, men's minor sports programs or, or men's minor programs in general are cut uh, trying to get things more equitable. So that's Title IX in a very, very brief nutshell. If we zoom out to the current day, probably the most prescient uh, or, or issue that uh, has the most uh, coverage in today's society is probably the Me Too movement, uh, if we're focusing uh, still on gender equity. It's a movement against sexual harassment and assault started in 2006 by a gal by the name of Tarana Burke on her MySpace page. Just think about that, MySpace and Facebook used to uh, be the two entities clamoring for market share, if you will, in the social media world. And obviously one of them survived and one did not. MySpace did not survive. But this gal uh, started it as a grassroots campaign to promote, to promote empathy through empowerment and uh, kind of got revitalized in 2017 by Alyssa Milano, 
uh, through the hashtag MeToo as part of an awareness campaign uh, with regard to how women are treated and, and assault uh, and harassment that oftentimes they have had to and do face uh, just trying to navigate their normal daily lives. And so there have been all sorts of interesting examples with regard to the Me Too movement in the entertainment world, whether it be Harvey Weinstein or in politics with people like Al Franken or the sports world with no shortage of examples. The military has had to deal with it, is still dealing with it. Medicine uh, has had tremendous challenges with uh, gender equity, treating women fairly in the, in the medical fields. And then in general, male-dominated professions, those jobs that have historically been very, very male-dominated have, have had some real challenges in terms of how women are treated within their ranks. The Forest Service, uh, fire, uh, for instance, that's something uh, near and dear to me, one of the ways that Palmer and I know each other, wink, wink. Uh, and so just a, a fantastic movement in terms of trying to help bring awareness to just how women have been and are being treated. Uh, it's something oftentimes that's just not given the thought uh, or, or the attention that it should have. And, and lucky uh, for us is the Me, Too, the Me Too movement is helping uh, to do that a little bit. Hopefully the midterm elections here that just passed last week uh, where all sorts of uh, women candidates were successful in their run for the House of Representatives, oftentimes those women being from minority or underrepresented populations, a couple of Muslim American women uh, elected to Congress for the first time, uh, some openly gay uh, uh, Native American uh, gals won election as well. So again, hopefully some, some movement and some positive growth uh, on this front, but uh, much remains to be done in terms of gender equity. And so in the bigger bigger picture, one of the last slides there, uh, it's, it, it's more than just gender. It's this, it's this fact or this concern that for some reason humans have, a, have had and continue to have a real tough time just treating people fairly and equitably and not discriminating. Uh, because obviously if we're discriminating against somebody, it's pretty hard to uh, to say that you're being ethical or moral, and uh, thus that's uh, what this class is all about. So with that being said, uh, Raj the Border here from my secret uh, unannounced location. Uh, I'll catch you on the flip side, 475. Asta.